pray in your head. And you're praying to your Heavenly Father. How is it that Satan can't know your thoughts? Because when you go to your private chamber, go in the closet, you shut the door, and then you pray, <clears throat> how can't Satan know what you're thinking? Here's an example. Let's say you're in court and you're, nah, whatever, you're fighting for custody. You tell yourself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. going to get custody because I am telling the truth. Then your thought pops in your head. No, you're not. You're not getting custody. doesn't matter if you're telling the truth. Nobody cares. They don't give single men custody of their own. Uh, they don't give single men custody, especially when they just got out of prison three years ago loser okay whatever you say Satan alright so there's a conversation going on in your head when you're sitting there in the courtroom battling anxiety battling doubt so you can sit there and pray to your Heavenly Father in the courtroom Lord, please let me get this. You know, I need to get my kid out of this situation. And then the devil will throw his two cents in there. Usually, the devil just likes to talk shit. Okay, so there's an argument going on in your head. The devil can inject thoughts into your head, which is what he does all day long to everybody, but he does it in their own voice, so it's hard to detect. And you can say that, well, the devil only can only inject thoughts into your head. It's not like he can read your mind. Well, when you're thinking... I'm going to get, this is going to work out for me. When you're being positive in your head, and then all of a sudden an injected thought comes in that counterbalances what you just said, the topic of what you just said, then that means the devil is reading your mind because he's relating to the things that you're thinking without even saying them out loud. So when you go and pray in secret, how is it that the devil can't hear what you're praying? Because he's the one that puts doubt in your mind towards whatever it is that you are thinking about already. These are about thoughts. Because I've often wondered it myself, does the devil, can he read my mind? Well, it sure seems like AI can read my mind with things that you think about and all of a sudden you see it and you can say it's a synchronicity or whatever, or a coincidence, but can you pray to your Heavenly Father? Can He hear you? Well, absolutely He can in your head, but so can the devil. Because he's the one that throws thoughts in your head that relate to what you're already thinking about. And that's the evidence right there. 
that's why that saying is a little bit it may not truly mean that to go literally in your closet shut the door and then pray you know even if you it, if you do that and you're praying out loud well obviously Satan can hear you anyway but you may think no you can't well yeah you can because it's like God and Satan it says that Satan can't be everywhere all the time. But it sure damn seems like it that he can be anywhere Agent Smith at any given point in time. Everywhere, every move that I make, he'll be watching me. It always feels like somebody's watching me. And I got no privacy. That's because it's true. It's not, it's not something it feels like. It's just absolutely true. Now, praying to your Heavenly Father in secret without, you know, uploading a video. You could be watching someone's video and communicating to them through that video right then and there live without even saying anything and then that's more like praying to the Heavenly Father because you're not actually broadcasting it on the news so I tend to believe that's kind of more like what it is in secret is well to me the YouTube platform is public that's the public journal me uploading this video right now will be public. Now, if I decided to not upload the video and I'm just talking out loud, God and Satan can hear me. If I just think as I'm driving without pushing record and I'm thinking of all these things, and if the devil throws some kind of doubt in my mind towards the subject that I'm talking about, well, then that obviously means that he's reading my thoughts because he's the one injecting the negative energy. Unless it just comes down to this. You are the devil and God in one vessel. Because you're good, you can be good one day, split second later you can be evil cursing someone out because they just pissed you off. And, and then the devil is what in your head is what judges you in a way that God doesn't judge you. There's two different judgments. Satan's judgment is to keep you sinning and self-loathing and you'll think ah man God is really hard on me because I messed up again and well no that's that's the devil and when you can't differentiate the two of them you're screwed because you're you don't know so regardless of the devil and God in your head because there's it's a twin system we have been stuck. It's as if the flesh is the devil and we think fleshly thoughts are our, con our conscious is connected to the flesh until our flesh dies and we leave it. And then we go back to just just our thoughts and no demonic presence because that would truly be like heaven where your thoughts don't repeat everybody is the same your thoughts repeat you're a re you're a recorder and a playback ai program we're all programmed to think something believe something and why do you think songs repeat themselves over and over and over? It's like da 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 da
because that's what our brains do. Just stop and think for a second what you're going to hear three times in a row. It's going to be the last thing that I say. See? You can't control that. That, it just repeats and repeats and repeats. And usually the people that talk a lot in person, they their thoughts don't repeat because they're, or even, you know, whoever, really, I talk a lot through the this, this platform, but when I'm done, I really don't talk at all. I may talk to, you know, whoever's around me, co-worker or family, my wife, but other than that, it's, it's just silence and whatever I'm watching and listening to. There's no question that there's two different spirits inside of us. One of them wants to do good all the time. The other one wants to do evil all the time. When you do good, the evil one tells you you're not good enough. So then that evil portion, and if you believe his, his lying ass, judgmental creep inside of your head, then you're going to lean more towards believing the horse malarkey that you think in your own head. So that's what I look at Stephen James Shauna. He he's like an AI program demon. Um, not sure if he's a real human being or not. Probably not. Jacob Israel, I don't think he's a real human being. I think he's more like Elon Musk. And Elon Musk is Lucifer's son. So he's a creation. Just like Jesus is God's son the creation but authentic you know through spirit flesh and blood um, I can't say the same about about the antichrist himself because the antichrist is someone who's in place of Christ he's someone who is uh, he has a false prophet so whoever the antichrist is he has a false prophet with him that basically raises him up. So, and then, you know, Jonathan Cleck always says, Cleck's a false prophet. Like, mocking other people that say that. I mean, even the, even the, the false prophet, they, he routes miracles. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Like, legitimate miracles. I heard Breaker, I think Breaker said it today, that even Judas was, uh, even Judas route miracles. And so Judas is looked at as the Antichrist, son of perdition, man of sin. But you have, so then who would be Judas's sidekick? Would that be Barabbas? Because uh, if Judas was the Antichrist, and then the Antichrist, the beast, and the false prophet, so there's a combination of two, then Jesus Barabbas is the opposite of that. Jesus Barabbas is it's the same name as Jesus Barabbas, the son of the Father. One of them's the son of the Father, and the other one's the son of the Father, the devil. So, the false prophet, how can't, I mean, who else would it be? It's not like it's Peter, right? Or is it? Peter was an offense to, to Christ. He said, get behind me, Satan, you're an offense to me. What was it that Peter was doing that was offensive to, to Jesus?
Barabbas was an insurrectionist. He was... Steve Mnuchin was talking about that, how it reminds him of it reminds him of Trump. But, you know, could Barabbas be the Antichrist and, and it wasn't really Judas? Because they line up so well together, the just the story itself. Because Judas had his 12 disciples, Barabbas had his group of people, and he was someone that caused riots and insurrections and all that. And, and then thinking about Trump being Barabbas for a minute, let's think about that. The insurrection happened at the White House, and it was because of Trump they blamed it on. Now... Now that, because I know how the script works, Trump would be as if he had nothing to do with it, right? And um, and Joe Biden set it up or something like that. But usually, even when people talk about a specific character, it's as if they're talking about themselves. So if I didn't know any better, I would say that Donald Trump isn't just Donald Trump. He's also either Stephen James Deshaun, Jonathan Click, Derek Rose, Jacob Israel. But I don't think Steve Noon is Donald Trump because, uh, or has the control. Because when I say that, everybody's behind masks. And they're they're behind different voiceovers and holograms, and you can easily uh, change your voice. And Jacob Israel doesn't even need to. It just that's what he looks like, and then but it, he's really an alien just behind a computer and with the technology. He sounds like you know how he sounds like and looks like how he looks like. But um. With Trump. It's as if he's setting himself up. It's just a storyline. It's not even like, you know, whoever does what, it, it's all staged anyway. It's a one big soap opera. It's nauseating to try to, dis to dissect it and, and still, you know, after almost seven years, something's got to give them in the seventh year coming up and something really has to give or I just may uh, you know taper off a little bit because what am I even doing why am I doing I guess it's for the Heavenly Father but my goodness Lord when does compensation come come around about, you know? You got all these liars and false prophets and devils that they just get up and they start spewing fear porn and collecting millions of dollars just to be a liar and it's just sickening to think about. And it and the house of God, which is the YouTube platform, they're all thieves. They're all fallen thieves. And Stephen James Deshaun is the house of thieves. So, you want to claim to be God, Steve, then I don't care who the hell you are. Change it. You want to be God to me? Fine. Give me my retirement plan and flip all the tables of all the liars that were hired and get rid of them and then I'll say hey you're my God my God my Lord you you answered my prayers will you be my God on earth the Antichrist claims to be God so so when I look at the two it's mixed feelings with Jonathan Click because 
I gotta remember, I, I feel like there's at least two people in that channel. So one of them is, one of them is like Daniel, and he's in captivity, and and uh, and he has Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they're coming. You know, they're not gonna bow down to King Stephen James Knezer. And because they're not bowing down to King Nebuchadnezzar, Steve, James, Ezra, Deshaun, then would that be Kim Jean, Skip Heitzing, and Paul Tiller that are in cahoots with with Jonathan Cleck as Daniel? And then Daniel's the one that prays to his God and he's able to show, you know, the king what uh, what he's saying, like what he's thinking and, and stuff like that. And then, who is like God? Well, Michael is like God. He's, he's like God. It's not that he's God, but it's the same thing as Jesus. Jesus is like God, but... To be a human being on earth and then to be looked at as God, it, that's only if he, that's only if he's in a, that's only if he's had travel back in the time and he's able to communicate with himself. Like in this matrix system, like look at how the art museum footage proved to me that my life has already been played out. It's already been recorded. It's obviously it's there. You can't take my footage, Bono, and use it 40 years ago and try to act like uh, it, I just recorded it for the first time this year. So it's it's like if Christ is a human being, well not if, he is, Christ being a human being walking the earth, flesh and blood, and then he's praying to himself, like Matthew Daly said. But that would only make sense if God already knew the beginning to end. And at some point, he came down here himself, put everything on pause, meaning his, his, his throne where he's at, and he comes down here. So his, his spirit is on the earth. And he wakes up to realize who he is through through being the Christ. And it's like he's waking up and realizing it, that he's the Lord God in heaven, and this is a matrix. That's the only way that that makes sense. But other than that, Christ is like God. Just like Michael, the archangel, is like God. And Gabriel reminds me of Stephen Noon for some reason. And then Michael, it's like coming to uh, the help of Daniel. And Steve, Stephen James, I mean, when he says, I rebuke you, Robin Henry Tease, he's trying to make it seem like he's Michael the Archangel rebuking the devil, me. And the only way that I'm the devil your opponent your opponent your adversary is if you are acting like you're the true Jesus but you're really not so then in that case then yes I become your antichrist So that's, and then the theories of who the Antichrist is, one of them is, one of them is, he's a billionaire. The other one is, he's a political figure, leader. The other one is, he's someone rebuilding Rome. The, the other one is, he's AI. Uh, and then, and then my theory is, well, what if he's all of the above? 
So when you look at a billionaire, naturally you'll think of who? Right, Stephen James Sean. Yeah. And, I mean, no, he's a poor suffering servant. I'm sorry, that can't possibly be him. You think of Donald Trump. You think of Donald Trump. Donald Trump as the Antichrist his false prophet well who would that be? would that be Joe Biden I heard at one point he's looked at as a false prophet but what is he prophesied nothing except for he'll cause all of those to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed so Trump was before o, o Biden and then he gets cut off halfway through right Donald Trump gets cut off halfway through just like the Messiah and then Joe Biden will cause all those to worship the first beast because they can't stand him so much because he's such a blithering idiot, according to the script, that he will cause, even if you voted for him, you now turned and you're like, what the hell? Did, why did I vote for him? I'm voting for Trump this time. He will cause all of you to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And you see, the Antichrist came up from the sea. I saw a beast rise up from the sea. I saw, <clears throat> I saw a serpent rising up from Schuylkill River in Philadelphia, and it turns into the art museum, which is a serpent eating Johnny. That's what I seen. And I also seen a beast rise up from the sea down there in Dolphin, where Joseph's brothers where he found them at and down in Dolphin right where the Bahama landscape is there's a T-Rex with a baby in its belly and son of man and the whole landscape shows a beast rising up from the sea because it's even like paddling you see the water paddles come, the traveling of the, the landscape the beast is rising up from the sea and um, and then if you look at if you look at Aquaman and with Stephen James who had he says he's like he's Aqua uh, would you say the Aquaman the, the, the carrying the man carrying pitchers of water or something and uh, Aqua something I forget what exactly what he said but it refers to water and then even claiming Michigan when you look at the landscape you have the the person with the really long nose that it represents it definitely represents a liar like Pinocchio so and um, and Antichrist is the one that's supposed to make a covenant with the Jewish nation and halfway through you don't know it but he turns on you and because you can't understand his language and you think he's all for you but he's not and then and then considering that creature from Google Maps, when you look at it, you, you know, just look at it. You'll see it right with Michigan, looking at it from the way that you would look at a U.S. map. And, um, and that aqua creature is brought to his knees. And that's what Steve said, the House of Cain. The only time it's going to stop is when the House of Cain is brought to his knees. So... The house of Cain being brought to his knees. Is, does that mean he's praying to God or he's just has to submit because he's brought to his knees as the Aquaman, the beast rising from the sea, the water creature that it's made out of water. The, the, the landscape and the image that's created with Pinocchio brought to his knees is made out of water. So, that beast I seen rise up from the sea. I seen Stephen James and Sean rise up from the sea uh, six years ago. So, and then I seen Jonathan Clegg. He rose up from the earth because I believe Jonathan Clegg is on earth. Running the Philadelphia. Running the, you know, there the art museum. It's, it's his spot. The angel, the bottomless pit. Just may be under there. And so when you have a beast and then you have a false prophet 
that shows all these images and cause all those to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And as Steve was talking about Johnny uh, and his images and causing all those to worship the first beast, I believe he's, impl he's implying that his sidekick from the beginning was Jonathan Click in cahoots together, the beast and the false prophet. They, they, but, you know, they're thrown alive into the lake of fire. And when you look at, when I look at Jonathan Click, I don't look at him as a false prophet. I look at it as that's what the script, that's what the script was. And, but he turned into a true prophet. Because I can testify to that. Because of what he's been showing and what I've shown and through that art museum footage and among a gazillion other things that I can go through. Well, yeah, a false prophet can show signs, miracles, and wonders. But I saw one of his heads as it had been wounded and slain to death. But at the same time, a beast rising up from the sea of humanity, you you know, you can have a you can have it, it can be taken both opposite ways. It can be looked at as Christ is the is the the beast that rise up from the sea of humanity, and he's speaking great pompous words against the most high God, which you know, which is really the Antichrist claiming to be God, because he's the one Really, he's talking blasphemous words against the devil. And then the devil is the one that accuses him. Speaking of the devil. Yeah. It's funny how there's key words I'll say. And then all of a sudden something pops up. So. As, as Christ having a wounded head. And he does live. Well, that would be a crown of thorns around his head. That would be everybody trying to put him in in a prison in his mind. All the devils that just appear and and are hired to spew garbage. So that could be one way of looking at it. And then and then this and then the second beast rises up from the earth and then he causes all of those to worship the first beast meaning Christ himself whose deadly wound was healed and um, so and then at the same time the second beast can also represent Christ because it's a beast with two horns like a lamb but he speaks like a dragon and so you have two horns like a lamb, and you, but you speak the serpent's language. In other words, you're as wise as a serpent, but you're as gentle as a lamb that has two horns. But if Christ was the second beast rising up from the, from the earth, because he lives on earth, then who is it that he would be causing all those to worship? Well, who would be the first beast? It would be... The Antichrist, because the first three and a half years, the second beast from the earth saw the beast rise up from the sea, and then considering Christ has two horns like a lamb, but then the flip side of that is the false prophet has two horns like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon because he's acting like he's a lamb with two horns, but he really speaks like a dragon. But Christ looks like a lamb because that's what he has, two horns like a lamb, but he speaks the serpent's language. So if Christ was the second beast and if Jonathan Clegg is representing Christ as the second beast, but yet looked at as a false prophet because you can either see male or you can see female. You can see good 
where you can see evil. And if if that was the case, well then Christ himself, the spirit being the second beast, would cause all those to worship the first beast because the first beast is the one that he is the one that wounded the head. However, as he wounds that first beast head with his foot as he stomps it out with his heel then naturally he's going to heal the first beast his deadly wound breathe the breath of life into Adam as his representative and then cause all those to worship the first beast because he's now on the up and up and that would be the only way that that would make sense is if Christ was the second beast causing all those to worship the Antichrist who came after him. He stomped his head, healed him, and then knew it. And then that's how the whole world is deceived. So, and that's why um, it's so nauseating because there's so many different angles to interpret it. And it all makes sense. So it's hard to really pick one. And then Stephen James could just be acting like he's the Antichrist. And wouldn't that be a kicker in, a, in the teeth? Stephen James was really Jesus on earth. <laughs> and, he was, and he was acting like he is a liar. And he's he, like, it's just an act. And then in the end, he's like the Lord God. And, and I got to repent because I, I came against him calling him an Antichrist. But yet I'm the coming against God, right? Wouldn't that be something? That'd be funny. <clears throat> God, to me, is the one that can turn this world around, hand me a life of relaxation and rewarding, and free up the rest of the planet. So, you want to be God? Do that. Because other than that, you, you ain't God. Nobody, nobody, uh-uh. God has not been reigning this on this earth and ruling it ever. It it was never that way. Because the moment it is, you'll start seeing you'll start seeing like a, there's a Tesla deal, dealership down there. You'll start seeing signs, free cars, one for every family. Those are the things you'll start seeing gas what it's not three dollars and 29 cents it's free here why do we have to be charged for anything because we're all slaves we're all in captivity and we're all in a prison planet you know when paul was in a prison do you think he was on the beach somewhere you know writing his novels and stuff or do you think he was in a literal prison? Well, I think he was by a beach writing his novels and stuff in the same prison planet that we're in, and he wasn't literally in a prison. I think when people got beheaded, they didn't really get beheaded. It's just their channels got, they're finished. They did their job, they're done. And even if you did get beheaded, Okay, well, your head's going to go on another body then, apparently, to, to sew it on there. Your head will be sewed onto an, another eternal body. So there were all the um, Antichrist and Beast and False Prophet. The dragon himself is, the, is Satan, it's the spirit. Because the same thing as the Lord God is a spirit that gives his power to his son, Jesus, and it's just a spirit. He's not talking about a physical being, although God just may be a physical being. He may have a YouTube channel just putting on a, a, a mask. Or that could just be the devil and his minions doing that. And God is a spirit in heaven, and he'll always be that. And just like the dragon gives his power over to the beast, 
well, Steve will try to act like he's the dragon and he's given me his power when really the devil gave him his power as the son of perdition. That's why his name is similar to perdition, Dishon. But, you know, this dishonor will be turned into honor. The, uh, the beast who rises up from Aquaman, sea creature, will have a wounded head and he will live but he will deceive the entire planet because he'll get everybody to turn against Christ and that spirit and worship him and once he does that oh the last thing remember when Matthew Daly and Stephen James and they all did this reenactment of a crucifixion of me and it was like a joke. That's all it really was. It's not like I'm Jesus. It's not like they even it's not like they even thought that. But Steve is is the orchestrator behind it. So I believe he got everybody to reenact that moment. And then they all laughed at me like <laughs> And you know, it's like it's real funny, right? And then so considering nobody believed that that was really like that was an actual crucifixion fast forward because if Steve is the Antichrist, well then he made a covenant with the Jewish the, with Israel for seven years halfway through you know when I started April 2nd 2017 April 2nd 2024 coming up next month, two months will be seven years when I showed up nine months later Derek Rose showed up, John uh, Steve and James showed up. I don't know if they're the same person or not, but I don't know. Maybe one of them is Barabbas. Maybe one of them is Judas. But uh, it's like now fast forward it. It reminds me of how when people probably thought the same thing. It's like in the beginning when Christ walked the earth, he was a nobody. And um but they winded up crucifying him. And so it's like they didn't believe it in the beginning, but he did get the Jewish nation to crucify the Messiah, right? Satan's last trick is to get the hands of the Messiah on the Gentiles. So fast forward to today, the Gentiles, the Jesuits getting caught, get caught trying to kill the real Messiah. That reminds me of he already tricked the Jewish nation because it was a reenactment and nobody believed it was true and then because it was true and it had already been fulfilled then the, sec the, the trick is to try to get the Jesuits to kill the real Messiah and then the second time around they truly do believe that he's the Messiah and they really want to kill him and then when they don't kill him and they get caught doing it and then the Jewish nation realizes we already did crucify our Messiah. And then the Gentiles are like, oh shit, we were getting ready to kill the Messiah. So one group already crucified him and killed him and didn't even know it because they didn't even believe it. They thought it was a joke. The second group really wants to actually physically kill this son of a bitch because they can't stand him. And then they get caught trying to kill their Messiah. And then everybody believes. And that's how the devil tricks all of you. Isn't that brilliant? I love that idea. I can't wait to write a, a movie about that. The first time around, they thought it was a joke. But it was the real, true, spiritual crucifixion. Second time around, he already fooled half the nation. Second time around, it's time... To, to get the Gentiles to recognize, yeah, we believe this is Christ and we want to kill him. And then right when they're getting ready to do that, they get caught. I'll tell you, Steve has some brilliant ideas up his sleeve, doesn't he? <laughs> that old devil. Oh, man.